Hello friends, this first quote is from the third paragraph of the introduction to Douglas Murray's The Madness of Crowds. This is the simple fact that we have been living through a period of more than a quarter of a century in which all our grand narratives have collapsed. End quote. Now this is Douglas Murray at uh, 20 minutes 37 seconds in conversation with Chris Williamson on his podcast in the episode titled The Price of Thinking Out Loud. There's something incredibly deep that has happened underneath our societies which, if we're not in denial about, we don't face up to. Which is, we're living in a stage where we might be among the first people in human history who have absolutely no explanation for what we're doing here and no story to tell about what we should do. End quote. I'm no scholar of Douglas Murray's work, but I admire him greatly, and he gives me an endless uh, jumping off points for my own thoughts. So, here we go. Nations and civilizations cannot exist without grand narratives. And what I genuinely fear is that Russia and China, for example, will have more coherent grand narratives that their citizens are willing to fight and die for than do the Western nations as a whole. I am a proud American and a patriot. As a 14-year-old, the first thing I ever wanted to be in this life was a United States Marine Corps officer. I wanted to be the first to fight, and I wanted the burden of leadership. But here I am speaking of an identity that I experience as even deeper. I am a citizen of Western civilization itself, and it is in this context that I speak to Americans, to the British, to Europeans, to Australians, to Taiwanese and Japanese, and to so many others I am too ignorant to list off the top of my head simply because I have no idea how many nations actually believe in Western ideals or simply act like they do. In any event, I speak now to any citizens who live within Western nations or identify with traditionally Western ideals of life and political process, no matter where you live. Really and truly, what are we willing to fight and die for? In the face of a historical Nazi Germany or a present-day Russian or Chinese invasion of our lands or shores, for what values would we fight and die for? I argue that we should and must be willing to fight and die for the values of Western civilization itself, no matter where they may appear or are trying to appear on our globe. And I would argue that we must advance consciously and with full awareness that ethos of a global citizen. And the idea and ethos of a global citizen, I would argue, can only come from Western ideals. This is not about trying to advance the idea of a global state. This is about trying to advance the idea of the consciousness of global citizenry in every state. I can see Russia or China or Iran imagining global totalitarian hegemony, but that is obviously not what I mean. And in those regimes, you have something closer to subjects, not full citizens. We must preserve, celebrate, and improve upon the Western ideals of governance and citizenry. And we must do so everywhere on earth where there are people who celebrate and aspire to and are willing to die for these values. So at this moment in time, my heroes are in Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, who just yesterday re-elected the Democratic Progressive Party to the presidency for the third time. And this is the party who insists that Taiwan is a sovereign nation. God 
damn, that is brave for a small island nation just miles from China's coast. Well done. May we all be so brave. And I do understand the agony that many are feeling regarding the Palestinian civilian loss of life because of Israel's military actions in Gaza. On a very personal level, I identify both with the small child killed by an Israeli airstrike and with the IDF soldier doing their duty to respond to an unprecedented and evil terrorist act by Hamas. Terrorism they have vowed to repeat. In my own childhood, I was that small Palestinian child. And as an adult, I know I would serve as an IDF soldier. I identify as both and I allow myself to feel the pain and conflict of identifying as both. And now that I've mentioned Taiwan and Israel, let's give the Ukrainians their due. And there is a reason I mentioned them first in my list of heroes. They have been fighting and dying for Western ideals and Western aspirations for nearly two years, or much longer if you consider it since 2014. To my Ukrainian brothers and sisters, I say from my heart, fuck Putin. And I love you. And I wish there was more that I could do. So, back to Douglas Murray and his accurate description of the demise of all of our grand narratives, at least in the West, or the established West. Oh, we have come up with alternative narratives to occupy ourselves with, but I would not call them grand, and they are certainly not unifying. My thoughts. I believe that our grand narrative must become the idea of the West itself again. Believe in ourselves again. God damn it, it is about freedom. Not perfect freedom, but what kind of freedom do you think exists in Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, and so on? And at the moment, for me, a value and a practice that comes to mind is this, free to speak. I am not a free speech absolutist because I just don't know how to make that work. That said, what if the most basic Western civilizational principle we could act on is just that, free to speak? And for those who inherently think that the British Empire and British colonialism was all bad all the time, do you think the citizens of Hong Kong were more or less free to speak under British administration or when the territory was handed back to China? You already know the answer, right? You feel it in your gut. From a Human Rights Watch article that I will link below. Open quote. On June 30th, 2020, the Chinese government imposed the Draconian National Security Law, NSL, on Hong Kong with devastating consequences for human rights, basic civil and political rights long protected in Hong Kong, including freedom of expression, association, and peaceful assembly, are being erased. It is evident. It is evident that the NSL is an integral part of Beijing's larger efforts to reshape Hong Kong's institutions and society, transforming a mostly free city into one dominated by Chinese Communist Party oppression. The citizens of, end quote, the citizens of Hong Kong were largely free to speak because 
of British institutions and cultural norms. And now they are not. And it is because of examples like this that I feel morally compelled to use my right to free speech while I have it. Because who am I to know for sure that I will have it tomorrow? Free to speak. What if that was to become a trans-global movement, an identity? Just that one simple idea. That idea levels critiques and offers accountability almost everywhere. At every European nation, God knows at the US, and at every other nation as well. Again, going back to Douglas Murray, three of the arguments that he has brought up in favor of free speech is, to the best of my memory, I'm not making direct quotes. One, you might be wrong. So you might as well listen to views you disagree with and maybe learn something. Two, by having to defend your ideas in public, you relearn and resharpen the arguments in favor of the ideas you cherish. And three, by allowing and promoting and protecting free speech, you can encourage people to show their true colors and then allow horrible ideas to be challenged and debated out in the open. So in a very real sense, I'm perfectly happy to know those among us who like to chant things like death to Israel. I'm just getting my footing around the idea of free speech and why it's so important. I am thinking out loud and learning in public. And why do I keep on bringing up Douglas Murray? That snide, sarcastic, arrogant, white, cisgender, gay, <laughs> male, know-it-all with the most upper crust of British accents imaginable. I keep bringing him up because I know why he's angry, and I'm angry for the same reasons. Western civilization deserves to be defended and improved upon, not fractured and denigrated to the point where it may never recover. A quick pivot here. I feel a profound duty, and I do mean duty, a civic duty, as a global citizen, to say what I see. And what I see in terms of Western democracies is that the building is on fire. The building has not burnt down, but it is on fire, and we are the ones who in large measure set it alight. And at least in the U.S., the twin insanities of the far right and far left are just about equally to blame, even if I fear their excesses for different reasons. What we are doing is insane. All the protections we have seen for historically marginalized populations of people come from the West itself. And if we burn down the idea of the West as a profoundly good thing to exist and to improve upon, who is going to protect all those minorities? Putin? She? Hamas? We must make transnational, transglobal solidarity with Western democratic ideals much, much more visible and unified. I like the idea of free to speak as one powerful creed of the global citizen. What do you think? I also want to take a moment to acknowledge something. This YouTube channel is not a hobby for me. Not anymore. I am pushing myself and sometimes quite hard and sometimes too hard. But I'm doing this precisely because no one is shooting at me. I know the conflicts of the world are not my personal responsibility, but my responsibility to use the freedom of speech I do have available to me, that is my personal responsibility. I do not like Donald Trump, but as my MAGA friends would say, freedom isn't free, and they are right. It isn't free and isn't guaranteed. 
I will use my freedom and my freedom of speech to attempt to uplift anyone, anywhere, who desires to live in peace and freedom, free from totalitarianism in all its many forms. I'm basically Buddhist, but I feel compelled to say, God bless you. God bless you all. And I love you. Thank you as always. I'll see you soon.